Hello. In this corner, representing Germany in the 19th century, Carl Friedrich Gauss. In this corner, representing the United States in the 20th century, John C. Slater. In this video, we are going to compare and contrast two mathematical formalisms that are used to represent atomic and molecular orbitals, Gaussian type orbitals and Slater type orbitals. We can recognize a Slater type orbital, which we usually write as STO, as a function that has factors of X, Y, Z and powers of that. But in addition, the most important part, it has an exponential part, which can write as e to the r minus r1 power. The important thing here is that the exponent of e is the variable to the first power. And that's how we can recognize the Slater type orbital functions. If we make a quick sketch of this type of a function, we notice that the function is centered at r equals r1. So this is the location of the function, which would be the location of a nucleus, for example. And it has a very peculiar shape. It's our just decaying exponential in both the positive r and the minus r directions. And we notice a very important feature is it has this cusp, it comes to a point because we recall in S-type orbitals that the electron actually has a non-zero probability of being at the center. And it's most likely to be as close to the nucleus as possible and the probability of being found further and further away drops off to zero at infinity. The Slater-type orbitals are the closest to the mathematical expressions that we derive from solving the problem of the hydrogen atom. There is one important difference between Slater type orbitals and the solutions to the hydrogen atom problem. We recall that for a 2s orbital, while s orbitals have zero angular nodes, we know that the 2s orbital has one radial node. So at a certain point, in the probability distribution function for the uh, 2s orbital, at some point the probability of finding the electron at a particular distance from the nucleus is going to be zero. So we know that a 2s orbital has one radial node, a 3s orbital has two radial nodes, a 4s orbital has three radial nodes. In construction of Slater type orbitals, there are no radial nodes. For P, D, F orbitals, there will still be the important angular nodes, but there will be no radial nodes. So in that sense, Slater type orbitals are not exactly the same as the solutions for an electron in the hydrogen atom. So what about Gaussian type orbitals? So G Tos. So we can think of this as a function, again, with possible uh, linear quadratic factors at x, y, and z, but ultimately there's an exponential part that is very subtly different than for a Slater type orbital. Put R2 here. The important feature is that now the variable is squared. So here we have to the first power, here we have to the second power. And that makes all the difference. If we draw this function, again, make a quick sketch. And again, when this turns to zero is actually where the function is homed. So this is position R2. When R equals R2, that's where the function is. And now it has a shape that looks somewhat like this, but not exactly the same. And we get it as a sort of bell curve type shape, which I didn't draw particularly well there, but if you're familiar with the normal distribution in statistics, this is exactly the same type of function. 
This is also the same type of function that is the solution for the harmonic oscillator problem. So one thing which we can notice immediately that is relevant is that there is no cusp where the function is centered. It has this kind of curved shape. So we see that relatively far away from the center, the two functions look relatively similar, but when we get exactly to where the uh, function is based, particularly on a atomic nuclei, that this has a cusp and this one does not, which is somewhat physically unrealistic since we know that functions of this type are the solutions at least to the electron in the hydrogen atom problem. So the question remains, why would we ever want to use Gaussian type orbitals when it seems that Slater type orbitals are more physically realistic? It turns out that Gaussian type orbitals have one incredibly important and useful property, which largely accounts for their use. If we multiply two Gaussian functions together, we get the remarkable result that the product is another Gaussian type function. So you may say, well, why is that important? Well, it turns out in quantum mechanics, we end up with a very large number of integrals of so the following type here, where we actually have four electron functions multiplied together that we ultimately have to take an integral of. So it's this fact that in computational chemistry, we have an enormous number of integrals that we have to solve. If we have Gaussian type orbitals, Gaussian type functions, then any of the types of integrals of this type are converted into an integral of essentially a single Gaussian type function. That is so much of an improvement in computational ability, the fact that Gaussian type orbitals don't look as physically realistic isn't nearly so important. And it will turn out that that unphysicality of Gaussian type orbitals can be easily corrected. It turns out that Gaussian type orbitals have one incredibly important and useful property, which largely accounts for their use. If we multiply two Gaussian functions together, we get the remarkable result that the product is another Gaussian type function. So you may say, well, why is that important? Well, it turns out in quantum mechanics, we end up with a very large number of integrals of so the following type here, where we actually have four electron functions multiplied together that we ultimately have to take an integral of. So it's this fact that in computational chemistry, we have an enormous number of integrals that we have to solve. If we have Gaussian type orbitals, Gaussian type functions, then any of the types of integrals of this type are converted into an integral of essentially a single Gaussian type function. That is so much of an improvement in computational ability, the fact that Gaussian type orbitals don't look as physically realistic isn't nearly so important. And it will turn out that that unphysicality of Gaussian type orbitals can be easily corrected. It turns out that even if we want to model what is effectively a Slater type orbital, so if we imagine that a real 1s atomic orbital has a Slater type form, what we can do is use the fact that we can take a linear combination of Gaussian type orbitals. So suppose we take a number of Gaussian type orbitals, again, that have the Gaussian shape. So we take one that's pretty narrow and high, and then we take another one, which is not as high, but a little broader, and maybe even a third, which is very broad and not very high, and we take the linear combination of these three Gaussian type orbitals, and we see that we can get as close to a Slater type shape as we like. So while there's an inconvenience 
in having to model one atomic function by numerous Gaussian type orbitals, the savings in computational efficiency by using Gaussian type orbitals in these monster integrals of which there are many, many, many in computational chemistry is alleviated by the fact that we just take these linear combinations of Gaussian type orbitals and we can get as close as we want to the Slater type or real atomic shapes that are physical. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.